pregame.com. AFC Championship on Sunday, the late game in the NFL playoffs, and we're talking about Baltimore at New England. The Patriots laying about seven, total right around 50 as we talk about this game. Congratulations last week. I know you had San Francisco as your playoff game of the year. We had a big play on them also. And also congrats to VR because last week he talked me into getting off the under when we shot the video. He made a great case for the over. It came in. And uh, so we give him congratulations on that also. But in this particular game now, you've got a New England offense that has racked up these huge numbers. They haven't played a very tough schedule. They've played three teams that made it to the playoffs this year, Denver twice, handling Denver without a problem. I split with these two teams last week. I had Baltimore. I know you teased them down. Nice job with the Ravens. But I had Baltimore against the spread, started out well, ended up not covering, had New England. It's nice once in a while when you're not just a fan, when you actually got money on the games, to sit back and relax and snooze a little bit because it's such a blowout. But after facing a team... Uh, when New England played against Denver, an overrated defense. By the way, when they went on that big run and Tebow was getting all the ink and they were saying, yeah, but look at that defense also, I was saying, man, this is an overrated defense, overhyped, talking about Denver. They're bad outside the numbers against passing teams, and that's what happened last week. Outside the numbers, between the numbers, running the football, they just had their way. Now they got to step up against a premier defense. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't give myself too much credit because in my teaser, I always took the Packers also, and that oh, okay. one didn't turn out so well. But in fact, somebody told me you had to win both sides of that teaser. I wasn't aware of that. But <laughs> no, actually, um, the Baltimore situation here, you know, they've, they've gotten a lot of bad rep because they said, well, on the road, they're not as good. Right. And, and true, they're not as good on the road. And I think that's because they're so good at home. Right. But they're actually 4-4 four four against the spread on the road, so I think they've gotten a bad reputation there. Uh, they've gone on the road and they play, They faced two playoff teams, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Won both those games straight up. So don't automatically think Pittsburgh's a bad team on the road. It's just that their home field advantage is so strong. Right, and, and New England's really the only incomplete team left in the playoffs. And what I mean by that is they don't play a lot of defense. And I know you can break it down and say yards per point, you know, they're great here. But the bottom line is they played a soft schedule. They've got a lot of holes on the defensive side of the football. We saw last week New Orleans with their problems on defense get exposed, and we saw the same thing happen uh, in, in the other game with the leaky defense, which was the Green Bay Packers. So it's all complete teams except for New England, and they got the easiest opponent of the bunch last week and taking on the Denver Broncos. So now they've got to shore up that problem. They've also got to go up against you – know, I'm not a big Joe Flacco fan, Brian, but at the same time I think he gets a little bit too much heat and – you know, from the media. I mean, the guy's not spectacular, but he has thrown for 3,600 or more yards in three straight seasons. They haven't always had great receivers around him. Now, this year, they've got my favorite receiver in the NFL and Anquan Bolden. I think pound for pound, the toughest guy in the league, and he's expected to go in this game after being a little bit banged up. They've also got Ray Rice, who last week looked pretty good against Houston for much of the game and can be able to, or should be able to get by this New England defense because they are going to have to pay attention to the Baltimore tight end play also going outside and going deep when Anquan Bolden is on the field. That's what New England's going to have to pay attention to him. Because they have problems on defense, they're going to have to maybe not cheat up so much and help out against Ray Rice. I think this, the, the potential for Ray Rice to top the century mark is there this week against this Patriot defense. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Ray Rice. I was a big fan of Ray Rice when he was at Rutgers. In fact, that was a talented back or backfield right there with Ray oh, yeah. Rice and yeah. what was the other guy's name? <laughs> Brian, Brian Leonard. Leonard. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah I remember yeah, that guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's a capper now. <laughs> well, he's not getting much play in, in, the, in the NFL right now. He's just a situational back. But uh, only once this season's ball or are allowed more than 27 points in any game. And when you take a look at the side and total in this game, basically they're saying New England's scheduled to make about 27 and a half points. Right. And also, uh, New England's allowed 19 points or more in all games this year except for four opponents. And they've had, a, as you mentioned, a very weak schedule. Right. So it's a situation right here. I think there may be a little bit of value on Baltimore. Uh, a lot of people take a look at what happened last week. You know, I've been in the forums. You mentioned sure. the forums at pregame. A lot of people are saying, they go, well, look how bad that, they did, that Baltimore did offensively yeah. last week. How are they going to be able to keep up with this New England offense? That's a problem a lot of people make. They take a look at what happened exactly. recently. Mm -hmm. And what happened recently was Baltimore struggled to get by Houston. Mm -hmm. New England wins in a blowout. You can't do that. you got to take a look at the whole season. I well, plus, down. Houston's a pretty good defense. They're I mean, even without Mario Williams, they've got, I mean, Wade Phillips. You know, I always said the Peter principle when it comes to certain coaches. He shouldn't be a head coach. He's a great defensive coordinator. Yeah. And I went, through, I went through and I broke down the season averages here. And you, we talked a little bit about the week schedule that New England's played. And then... And I don't have this all memorized, so I'll have to stare at my notes here, but in the regular season, Baltimore outscored the opposition by seven points per game, and they did it in a division. When you take out Baltimore's record, the rest of the division won 52% of their games. Mm -hmm. 
We take a look at New England. Now, they did outscore the opposition by 10.7 points, which is 3.7 more than, more than Baltimore. But they did so in a division that only won 41% of the games when you take out New England's wins. So you, when you take a look at that, 3.7 points. But obviously, when you're playing these teams twice a season, you've got to make that correct. Sure. And, you know, you give them three points for, uh, for home field. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, you're looking at seven points right now is the current line. Mm -hmm. And the line probably should be about five and a half. And mm -hmm. I've, I've talked to many odds makers, and they think this line's a little bit inflated. Yeah, we grabbed seven and a half, or I did on Monday, and posted it online at seven and a half. Obviously, it's down to seven since then. Uh, but I forgot to mention two receivers. Here I am talking about Anquan Bolden. I didn't even mention Torrey Smith and Lee Evans. You're talking about guys who can get behind the defense, especially Lee Evans. And I think this is just going to be too much for New England to handle. I, you know, I went ahead and grabbed the points, but I'm not going to be shocked to see Baltimore come in there and win the game. And, you know, you've always got it's like the Duke of the NFL when it comes to New England, especially in the postseason. You know who the public's looking at. They're looking at Tom Brady, and they're 1-6 in in the last uh, against the spread in the last seven playoff games. And, and part of that is due to having to lay that extra juice, as you just mentioned. Should have been probably 5.5, and, and here, they were, here they opened up a 7.5-point favorite. Yeah, New England, you go back, I believe I heard a quote the other day. Uh, ever since he's ever since Belichick's been at New England playoff games, he's now 11 and 10 against the spread. Right. And granted, I don't want to take anything away from Belichick, but he he's got to play into this situation where the, the public knows he's one of the best coaches in, in mm -hmm. the NFL, and you got to pay a premium price. That's right. That's Baltimore and New England this Sunday, the late game, the AFC Championship. New England laying about seven. I like Baltimore at seven or more. We're going to back the Ravens. He's Brian Leonard. I'm Scott Spritzer. We've got more coming up right here at pregame.com.